Hello booktube and welcome back to the Future History Project. Now this is week 14 and uh, there are five short stories. Uh, there are two uh, that are in the found excuse me Foundation's Friends that are quite large. They're the uh, number four and five this week. Uh, but there are two stories from the complete robot and one story from Robot Visions. Now, uh, I'm, I normally would, when there's five, I would uh, split the week up into part one and part two. Part one being the first three or the first two, uh, depending on the lengths. But this time, normally for lengths, it would be the first three for part one and the last two for part two. Uh, however, um, that is the case, that would be the case because of the length. However, uh, the third story, uh, which is uh, that would be part of part one, uh, is called "Thou Art." That thou art mindful of him. That is a very important story, I think, for the future history, in many ways. So I'm going to do that as a separate video. Uh, that will be uh, week 14, part 1b. So for this video, I'm going to talk about Light Verse and Too Bad. Light Verse is a short story uh, in The Complete Robot. It was originally published, uh, let's see here if I can find it. Uh, I'll give you the year, but down in the... Uh, in the... Uh, description below I'll put more uh, details it was first published in the Saturday Evening Post in 1973 so it's a bit of a later one uh, but it's interesting it's it's about a robot well it's actually it's a murder there's a murder that happens it's a very short story uh, a Mrs. Uh, Lardner who uh, is a She's a widow of an astronaut. Um, the, the, the class, the, her husband was an astronaut uh, uh, martyr. Uh, they don't really go into too much detail. But um, she, she becomes very wealthy from investments after her husband had died. She becomes an art collector. And she has a lot of robots uh, as well. Uh, this is... Uh, well, I'll get to that in a second about the robots and interactions with humans. Uh, now, she, like, it, it's, it's said throughout the story that the U.S. robots and mechanical men uh, put it, you know, make so many robots and it's so complicated to make the positronic brain that invariably there, there might be little flaws in it. Not, not big things, but just. You know, they don't go into the details, but say like a little tick or something that the robot may just uh, speak something, you know, click his head or something like that, you know, uh, which is usually once it's known can easily be fixed. But she doesn't bother with that. She likes the, you know, the, the uniqueness of her robots. But she's also an artist or she puts herself over as an artist and making these light sculptures. Uh, and she has these parties unveiling these light sculptures. And she's very uh, popular with this. And they want her to sort of sell this stuff. But she allows holographic uh, copies of this to be put into museums. But as I say, she has these parties. Uh, and, and uh, you know, at one of the parties, there, there is a roboticist from the U.S. Uh, Robots and Mechanical Men. Who, try, who, who does light sculptures himself, but they're just static. There's nothing unique about them, not like Mrs. Lardner's. And he's always trying to do this, but he, get, he gets invited to one of her parties, and he's really excited. And he meets one of the robots there, Max, who's sort of taking the hats and the coats and so forth, and he notices that, that there's a flaw in him. You know, and uh, he fixes it. He fixes it because he's able to do it very quickly. He fixes the flaw, you know, a uh, little quirk. Uh, like, you know, he's not working perfect up to par. And he tells this to Mrs. Lardner. And her sort of, like, the, you know, blood drains from her face. Because well, what it is, is Max is the one that actually creates the 
the uh, light sculptures. And it's because of his flaws that he's able to do this. And she becomes furious. And there's a knife on the table. And she just immediately grabs it and stabs and kills uh, the, the roboticist. And because she knows that it can never be replaced. He cannot be changed back to the way he was. It was a unique flaw. And the roboticist sort of realizes it at the same time. And it's like the story is that he just sort of allows it because he figures, you know, it's not worth living because he's done this horrible thing, uh, you know, by, by, by fixing something that should never have been fixed. You know, it's the uniqueness of flaws that, that makes the, you know, the artist and, and, and the thing. So it, it, it's, it goes back to the age old thing that, you know, a perfect person, you know, it's the flaws that make someone maybe beautiful, like the flaws in their face or you know, to, to, you know, to certain people because perf perfection sometimes is just bland. And that's what sort of the story is saying. And, uh, and it's, there, there's no, I don't think there's, um, I'm trying to remember, is there a date that uh, this is set? Uh, there, there's been dates put to it that it's, you know, around, you know, you know, a, a century or so from now. But it's clear that robots are proliferated everywhere. And this this is a problem that uh, well, I think is a bit of a problem with Isaac Asimov's stories. And it's, and it's got to do with the fact that he just wrote these stories, not with thinking of a future history as he was writing them. Uh, it's He's trying to retrofit the future history after, you know, in, 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 later, um, in later writings, you know, in the 80s and everything like that. Which creates inconsistencies because it's pretty clear through a lot of the stories, like the Susan Kelvin stories, the, the Powell and Donovan and other ones, that there is what Asimov had called the Frankenstein, um, you know, complex, where humans are afraid of the robots and they've been out, outlawed on Earth and, you know, only within the, uh, you know, confined, certain confines of laboratory and so forth can a, can a robot be on earth so we see that in the stories but then there's a story like this which is you know past that time and robots seem to be freely freely around and we've seen that too with the uh the, the six volume of robots uh in time robots are everywhere like they talk about that you know they, they when they didn't have a robot around them uh in it, at times in the past they felt sort of vulnerable because there's no robot there to protect them that is not sort of that you know it's like these two storylines these two universes that are parallel you know side by side uh but and 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 this is the one the alternate one where robots are accepted uh, to a certain extent, anyway, and it's it's a greater to a lesser extent uh, in these stories. And then there's the other ones, like the Susan Calvin ones, which I think are the real sort of meat that you could pluck those out and say, yes, this works for the future uh, stories, like uh, the, the Caves of Steel, Naked Sun, and so forth. Like those things work uh, for that, and then that builds on into the foundation ones. And that, that to me is, is pretty clear, but these are plucking those out. And again, this was not, uh, I don't think, it, well, it's pretty clear that it was not Isaac Asimov's thought for this because there is the story that John W. Campbell wanted him to go and put an outline uh, for a future history um, sort of uh, storyline or, or at least potential stories where you could plot in something like uh, Robert, uh, Robert Heinlein did uh, for Campbell. And then started writing and plotting these things in. Asimov didn't want to do that. It just it just was uh, alien to him to, to if I excuse the pun to do that for his writing, which which shows. Uh, but it gives it gives variety. It doesn't sort of you know he doesn't have to shoehorn stuff in. However, it makes for inconsistencies. Uh, but it makes for interesting, you know, individual robot stories like Lightverse. It's an in, it's an interesting uh, story, as well as Too Bad, which was written for. Uh, it's a weaker story, but it was written for Robot Visions, uh, specifically in nineteen uh, nineteen ninety. 
Now, it's it's a very short story again, again, and the main character is uh, Gregory Arnfield. He was, he says not actually dying, but certainly there was a sharp limit uh, to how long he might live. He had inoperable cancer, and he had refused strenuously all suggestions of chemical treatment or of radiation therapy. So there, there, but there is a robot called Mike M K whatever, uh, like as Asimov sort of no, uh, nomenclature for robots. Who uh, they, they, this is the good thing of the uh, hardcover. Of this they've they've got nice uh, illustrations, and there's Mike. He he looks a bit moronic in some ways. Like she even the uh, missus uh, sort of says says that about him that he doesn't look. She she's anthropomorphizing the robot and he looks sort of you know not very smart because you know big body small head but what he is he's he's able to miniaturize himself and go into the body and and kill the uh the cancer cells so uh the the patient agrees to this however there are many flaws in this that that if uh you know something can grow it's a 50 50 chance where mike will uh, you know is, is unable to to control his re-expansion and expand very quickly in obviously in the body and, and kill the patient uh but he says he'll try not to do that and then there's the other thing is if he goes too small uh then he gets sort of ripped out of the body uh you know at light speeds and will show somewhere up in space and and then re-expand and, and explode so they, he takes a chance. The patient takes the test. Mrs. Uh, Mr. Um, uh, Gregory Arnfield takes the chance, and you know his wife is very concerned, and they, you know they're long, they're watching this, and she can't watch it much anymore. So she's sedated. He comes out perfectly fine, but there is a problem with Mike, and you know it takes him for a while to recover for this, and he wants to meet Mike and thank him for you know saving his life because you know no apparent uh, appearance of cancer anymore. But what happened was that Mike realized that uh, there were, there was an issue or a potential issue. Uh, see, he was told before he went in to not miniaturize himself too, too low, too small. Otherwise, he could be ripped out of the body, you know, between the electrons and, and, and you know, the atoms. And, uh, you know, so he's supposed to, you know, by the second law of robotics, obey. But that's only obey humans uh, where it doesn't hurt, you know, bring harm to a human. And then the, law, the third law is, you know, to protect himself as long as it doesn't conflict with the second law of obeying humans. And then the first law, uh, you know, uh, protecting humans. So he realizes there, there's, there's a problem here and he decides to miniaturize himself smaller so he gets ripped out of the body because he's afraid because it's it's like you know the doing harm to the human takes over the the, the first law takes over and uh and so he uh he does this he sacrifices himself for the patient and uh and you know the, the whole ending of it is you know he's is the uh Arnfield He's he's sorry for this, and he says, you know, but he pushed his her hand away impatiently. That's not all that counts, because she's saying, you know, it, what really counts is you're alive. He says, you don't understand. Oh, too bad, too bad. Um, you know, and that's the name of the title of it. Uh, so he sacrifices himself and then blows up in in space somewhere. Uh, when he re-expands, re so the, 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 these were nice little stories, but again, uh, they're, they're not dated specifically. At least I, I, sh I should have made a note if if it was, but uh, sorry, I, but I don't think they're they're dated, but they're but they're within the next century or two, I would say, um, of the, of the future, uh, you know, currently. But you know, the t too bad can sort of fit in. That's perfectly fine because it is in confines. Uh, they don't talk about robots everywhere else, as far as I can remember. So it's confined to the research and the medical institute. So that works. But light verse, as I say, doesn't quite fit in with that line of, of robots. 
and we've seen this you know there, there's there's these different sort of almost universes with with the robots uh but it's it is still they're still okay so like yeah the the two bad's a bit of a weak story but light versus i, I kind of i always had a soft spot for light verse i kind of like that uh because i like the aspect of the flaw being you know the unique thing that makes somebody you know more than not just bland if they're perfect because once once uh, uh max is fixed he's just your everyday robot same as everybody else you know um, so I, I, I like that aspect of it. You know, it's a short story that says one little thing and, and Asimov excels in, in these things, like saying one little thing. And then it's the same as, it is in too bad, you know, the, the guy's alive, but you know, the robot sacrificed for himself and that's too bad, you know, that that's happened, you know, um, it's just, you know, simple ideas and that's, that, that's where short stories are really good for these things um and in robot visions here there, there's a collection of of essays too of uh, uh about robotics and I'm, I'm gonna go through because there's uh there, there's short little essays uh there i think from uh editorials and, and so forth they're probably in his collected other uh um uh, volumes of science fiction as well i haven't cross-reference all this but i will be going through those at some point but yeah um these are the first two and as i say and then the next one um that i'll be doing uh, i'll be this will be uh part 14 uh 1b and i will specifically talk about that thou art mindful of men uh which was a really good story that uh was published let's see if i can see it here um I don't see it jumping out here. I will. I will chase that down. Um, I think it's a later story. I'm quite sure it's a later story. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't quite see it here. But but I'll track that down for the next video. And yeah, so uh, I'm glad we're back to some Asimov. Uh, it's a breath of French fresh air uh, after uh, after the uh, non Asimov material, and I, we really need to get a discussion going. I think, or well, I think so anyway. And I want to do a live at some point discussing these kind of aspects of the robot stories. You know, bringing all this kind of stuff in, uh, and it'll probably be after we get done, especially the short stories anyway. Because uh, once we get into the novels, we're pretty we're pretty safe and and, and you know uh, smooth sailing from there on uh, for you know consistency, you know uh, you know quotation marks uh, for the storylines. Anyway, I'll see you next time, Booktube. Take care.